What's up everyone? In the previous video, we looked at how to add expandable logic to your characters. However, just like most of what makes the character function is in its character movement component, it can be extremely beneficial to store important logic inside of actor components. What's great about actor components is, like their name suggests, they can be used on any actor, not just characters. So, being as general as possible is very important. As the title suggests, this is a form of non-destructive workflow. However, there is a small caveat to this that we'll be looking at that's important to keep in mind when you create components that are intended to be layered together. First, let's take a look at the base rotation component. Here on the event tick, you can see that nothing happens in this component until its setup is complete, which we'll take a look at in a moment. The main logic in this component is the three-step process of managing its owner's rotation. To start, we're going to take a quick look over each one, then focus in with more detail. Let's start with the current rotation, which as you can see just interpolates the current rotation to the target rotation by the component's rotation speed. In the update target rotation, however, you can see we're calling a function and feeding another function into it. And in update owner rotation, we're setting the world rotation of the owner's root component to the current rotation, which will rotate the actor. Now, if we take a look at the begin play section, you'll notice the first thing we do is construct an object of type basic lock. I thought it would be interesting for visual purposes to use boolean arrays in the previous video. However, here you can see I'm using a simple integer. If the integer is greater than zero, the lock is locked. And you can either lock or unlock it in stages, clamping the unlock to zero. This component will also set its variables to match the owner's intended rotation before completing its setup. Back in the update function, we can see that when we try set rotation, we're checking to see if the rotation is allowed based on our lock before setting the target rotation. And if we check the calculate target rotation function, we can see that it returns the target rotation. So we're setting the target rotation to the target rotation. Well, the way this works is that if we derive a component from this one to extend its logic, all the calculation for the rotation happens during the parent's event tick. Because of this, we have to make sure to add a sequence and link the parent's event tick to the end every time we make a new component. This is not a huge problem. However, the best gift you can give yourself as a developer is idiot-proof frameworks you won't forget how to use 30 systems in. So, by creating this placeholder function to calculate the target's rotation and placing it before updating the current rotation, all we need to do is overwrite the functionality for calculate target rotation which looks something like this. Here I created another function in this class for calculating the movement rotation, and it returns if movement is happening and the rotation. As well, you can see if movement isn't happening, it checks the setting called movement dependent to see if it should continue towards its target rotation after movement has stopped. The getRotationInfo function is in the base component, and it just returns the variables since I made them private. Inside the calculate movement rotation function, I start with a sequence to allow for the use of a single rotation node, returning local variables set within the function. If the owner reference is not valid, this will simply return the target rotation. Otherwise, it will get the velocity rotation, which returns if the velocity is greater than the move check tolerance, and the rotation it's facing in world space. Then, lateral rotator will return the yaw exclusive version of the rotator, and it will either return target rotation or the movement rotation based on if there is movement. I turn the rotation speed down a little bit for example. You can see if I turn 180 degrees and stop right away, the character will continue to rotate even after stopping. You can see what happens here with movement dependence. If I run up against the wall however, you'll see the character doesn't continue to face the direction you're walking. Instead, it will face the direction it's moving. Maybe this is what you want. If not, you can also derive a new component from the movement component, this time specifically meant for characters. In this one, right away we're checking to see if we're intending to use the input rotation. If it's not the case, we can just return the parent movement rotation functionality. Otherwise, once again I make a new function for calculating the input rotation, which works exactly like the other one, except I'm using a function I have stored in a library of character helpers that uses the character movement component to get the input direction. If the input vector is too small, it will check for input dependence, which once again just controls if rotation should stop as soon as input is released. 
Now, you can see that if I go and walk up against the wall, the character's rotation will continue to face forward, even though it's moving along the wall. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can take a very simple set of logic and convert it into an infinitely reusable and non-destructive system, which you can migrate around and use in any of your projects. However, there is still that caveat I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is kind of the whole point. That being, this particular system is not actually, technically speaking, non-destructive. Take a look at the lock, for example. It is fully self-contained, and it's intended to be set and checked by other systems outside itself. So that is itself non-destructive. However, the whole reason the rotation component exists is to actually rotate its owner, which by definition makes it destructive, which is totally fine. We are setting up a framework here to work within. So if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. It really does help. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. Here's a small preview of something I'm working on for a future video. Hope you have a great day.